Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, basketball fans of all ages, this is the Victor Ortiz Court at the Arthur Staff Gymnasium, home of the Brockton Boxers, and today they welcome the Norwell Clippers for a battle of the undefeateds. The Clippers coming in at 1-0 and the Brockton Lady Boxers coming in at 3-0. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside my broadcast partner Chris Bazil, and Chris, High scoring and defense is the name of the game for the Brockton Lady Boxers. That's been their bread and butter through the first three games. New coach Morgan Thatcher only in her fourth appearance uh, as the head coach of the Boxers looking to continue the streak and really get the fundamentals down. Yeah, Morgan, yeah, Morgan, Morgan Thatcher. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty interesting that Morgan Thatcher was actually a... A player here at Brockton High. She actually won national. She actually won state player of the year, the Gatorade State Player of the Year, back when she played, back in when she graduated in 2010. So that's interesting. So this is actually my first game, girls game of the year. So it should be pretty interesting. It um, is the two centers going at it. Rebecca Tannis for the Brockton Boxers. Grace Oliver for the Clippers. Oliver winning that over to number four Nina Elio. The two guys to watch out for on the Clippers. Elise Ryan, she scored 21 in the Clippers last game, and senior co-captain Christy Vieira, she had 17 in the Clippers' first matchup. Norwell coach Matthew Morani saying this is a very good early season test to go against the 3-0 Brockton Boxers on the road, see if they can get their rotation going. He said he expects to use anywhere between 9 and 11 players tonight and a heavy rotation for the Clippers. Here's Alex Williams, reverse layup. Is good off the glass, and the Proxers take first blood 2 0 in favor of the squad in white. Yeah, I expect both coaches to use uh, a heavy dose of their um, depth. This is going to be a good game. This is going to be a good game. This is going to be a good one. There's a steal for Alex Williams. She's in on a one on one. She stops, takes down a player off the glass, and in. No foul called. Is going down was Christy Vieira against Williams, and the ref says that's clean. Get up and play. Outstanding back-to-back -back basket by uh, Alex Williams. It is 4-0 in favor of the Boxers. This three goes off the rim. No good. Offensive rebound. Good arm fighting down there. And now it's turned over off the glass to the senior co-captain, Elizabeth Williams. Elizabeth quickly getting it over to her younger sister, Alex. Alex Williams, the sophomore. Yeah, and yeah, this Brockton High team got some new, got some new fresh players, some new athletic players as well. Liz Williams off the glass, really, no good. Really Gets her own rebound. That's the fundamentals, Chris. We're talking about. Yeah. Follow your shot. Get into the paint. Chase your rebound, and that's exactly what Elizabeth Williams did there. And it leads to points for number ten. That is Angelina Fernandez. It is six nothing in favor of Brockton. Yeah, quick start for Brockton is exactly what they needed. It is worth mentioning. Norwell, the Clippers wearing their visiting all blue jerseys, blue shorts with gray trim around the white numbers and lettering. The boxes in their home white jerseys and white shorts with red trim around the black numbers and lettering. A wild shot and another re rebound to the boxers. Turns into a jump ball. Fernandez couldn't get clean possession of it. But off the jump ball, the boxers will have a fresh inbound to be done by Elizabeth Williams. Now a cold called on you, Alex Williams. You saw how Angelina Freeman is on the reverse layup, off the steal. Good play by her. So now Norwell inbounds it. And this is number 22, Anna Kirshner, the sophomore guard. Boxers take it cleanly off the inbound pass. Elizabeth Williams bring it up. Number three for the Boxers, giving it over to Alex Williams. Alex now rotating top of the key. She gets. An offensive call against Rebecca Tannis here for the hold. She was not hey, near the ball. Here's Nina Elio. Elio gives it up to Anna Kirshner. Stop and pop long too. That's well short. And both a push and a kickball call. Tannis called for a push. So that's her second foul. She's going to come out now in uh, change out with Evna Silva Ferreira. 
Agnes Silva Ferreira looks like a pretty tall girl, pretty stronger as well. Let's see what she contributes. She is parked in the paint as the boxers heavily pressure the ball. Two on one on the ball. And the Clippers send it out of bounds. The pass was intended for Grace Oliver, the freshman forward. Elizabeth Williams gets it in to Alex. Six nothing. Two and a half minutes in. There's 523 to go in the first quarter. Alex Williams rotating back across the paint. Gives it out to Nailani Montero, one of the returning starters for the Brockton Lady Boxers. Now back up to Alex Williams. She's another returner along with her sister Elizabeth. Eight on the shot clock. Elizabeth Williams, rather Alex Williams loses it. And the Clippers take it. Fast break up for Christy Vieira and the first bucket of the game for the Clippers. Nice shot by Christy Vieira. Nice mid-range jumper. It is six to two, Brockton on top. Here's Alex Williams, a bad angle layup. Goes off the back of the rim and kind of ride, rode the rails there on the back and Norwell comes away with the rebound. Losing possession momentarily is Grace Oliver able to regain it. Now Nelani Montero able to tip it back across the half court line. There's only 15 on the shot clock now. A long three is no good off the glass and off the back of the rim. Two offensive rebounds for the Clippers, and it leads to a foul called on Alex. Uh, no, they're going to call number 44 for that. That is Evna Silva Ferreira called for the hit down low. And at the line is the freshman Grace Oliver. We're going to see some of that early rotation, the chess match. Yeah, we'll see Alexandra Williams take a break. Kinari King, the the. Kinari, Kinari King, the, excuse me, Kinari King, the junior guard, she'll check in. A very slasher type of a player. Very smart basketball player as well. She's got excellent range. We saw a little bit of it last year. She got limited minutes as a sophomore on the Brockton Lady Boxers. And she's got it now, the small point guard for the Boxers. Gives it off to Elizabeth Williams. Williams getting triple teamed, finds some room, throws it off the backboard, and the Clippers come away with it. Down low is number 13. That's Grace Oliver. Wide open corner three. In and out. Elizabeth Williams gets knocked into midair trying to grab the rebound and a push. is called on the Clippers. Rebecca Tennis is going to come back in. Hey man, hey man, tell me about Elizabeth Williams. She seems like a newcomer. She's a newcomer on the um, girls' varsity team. Tell me about it. Do you know anything about her? Elizabeth Williams, the now four-year starter on this team and senior co-captain. She is <laughs> a little bit of a confusion at the scorer's table. The referee screaming at something. So Elizabeth Williams, uh, four-year starter here for the Brockton Lady Boxers, has been a longtime leader in really broke out her sophomore season, putting up a lot of points as one of the starting point guards on this team. Last year, she switched to a pure center role and that oh. didn't work out entirely so well for the boxers. She saw a little dip in production, but if anybody knows how to utilize the taller players on the court, it is one of the tallest players in Brockton Lady Boxers history, Morgan Thatcher. Kanari King with it, oh, she oh, lost yeah. it. She just lost the handles and Nino Elio has it. Her layup is off the glass, no good offensive board for Oliver off. Up and in, six to four in favor of the boxers. 3.20 to go now in the first quarter. Elizabeth Williams with it, working her way in. She is called for the travel. Yeah, she, she was just appearing to look, she was just appearing to draft to the basket, but kind of congested by the defense of Norwell. A good double by Norwell. Caroline Degnan now in the senior forward. A Kinari King on the steal of the, off the inbound. That's her first basket of the game. In advance one. Up, 
Kari King again coming up with the loose ball. King's floater is good. Christy Vieira, the captain, again, 17 points in the first game of the season for the Clippers. Spin around jump shot by Molly Hogan is good. Silva gets it out to Canary King. King working the baseline, runs out of room. Oh. I was well defended by Nina, Nina Elio, but could have been. But as we see here, Kinari King off the steal. Inbound, off the glass and in. Nice play. Simple basketball. Christy Vieira had no idea where King was, and by the time she realized where the ball was, she was already trying to get back to her feet from a couple of broken ankles. 10-6 in favor of the boxers. A three goes in and out. The rebound tapped to Rebecca Tannis. Had trouble corralling it, now gets it to Alex Williams. Williams working her way in, draws the foul. Hold called on Mary Grace Sight. And the rotation is heavy now for the Clippers. Kinari King on the drive. Lays it in a good. Already seven Clippers have found their way onto the court. Alex Williams long three. That's off the mark. Offensive rebound in the right place was number four. That's Desiree Almeida. Loose ball. The Clippers pick it up. It wound up in the arms of Molly Hogan. See the boxers playing that man-to-man -man defense. Offensive board, Caroline Degden is able to convert 10-8. In favor of the boxers now, 1.08 to go in the first quarter. Two hands call on Nina Elio. Yeah, 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 man. This is a very fast paced game by two well, two well teams, two good teams so far. A lot of offense a little, and little defense a, a bit, so. Good to see, it's good to see some good basketball by these two teams. Ellie Phillips finds her way into the game as the eighth clipper onto the court in this first quarter. Alex can't corral it. It goes five hole between her legs and out of play. Now the referee wants to have a conversation with Alex Williams who kind of shoved the ball further out of play when she picked it up. Alex, Alex comes up with the steal. Now she's got King as her runner. A nice finger roll by Trem Alex Williams. Tremendous play by Alexandra Williams. She's just looking like a pro so far. Floater in and out. And unable to keep it in bounds. Yeah, Alexandra is after going behind the back, lays it up and in. This is a fabulous player, Alexandra Williams, that she is. As Andrew is only a sophomore as well. Alex Williams driving baseline. Tried to throw it out of play and now a jump ball called. It will be a boxer basketball. It is a chess match as these two head coaches, both Morgan Thatcher and Matthew Ronnie going piece for piece. Eight boxers, eight clippers on the court. So far, early in this game. Yeah, as we as we already said, as I said, both teams should well, well use their depth because this is going to be a good, a good outstanding matchup early on by these two Division One clubs. So they change possession here as the possession arrow on the scorer's table did not change on the last jump ball earlier on in the first quarter. Good work by the officials to sort that one out. Inbounding, it's gonna be Grace Oliver, the freshman forward. 
one of the tallest clippers on the court. And she gets it into Christy Vieira. Here to Molly Hogan. Hogan's floater no good, but a hit is called and at the line for a couple of shots is Grace Oliver. 17 and change left in this first quarter. The Boxers with a four point lead, 12 to eight. First free throw no good. Yeah, as we see Coach Mariani orchestrating his plays. Yeah, just two sm just talented, talented girls on, on this court right now. Norwell historically one of the better athletic programs across all sports on the South Shore. It's always tough in soccer, especially in soccer. How did the how did their soccer teams do so far last season? They made a deep run now, six on the clock, and it's chased out of bounds by Alex Williams. The boxers will have a fresh inbound with just about six seconds to go. You can see that, As you see that shot block was blocked by, by Grace Oliver. Nice block on Alexandra Williams. Now Williams finds some space, throws up a wow, shot, and that, what a shot. that was kind of a prayer. She was leaning forward off balance, and she converts, I believe, the, no, they're going to call it a three. So oh. 15 to nine. At the end of the first quarter, the boxers on top, and as you mentioned, action-packed, tons of rebounding opportunities. Both teams having issues with defensive rebounds. A lot of offensive boards to go around for both teams, and that's where a majority of the points have come through. Yeah, a lot of uh, yeah, a lot of that, and I think Alexander Williams and the Keenari King, they were sort of they were sort of the impactful players, but from from the Brockton Lady Boxers, Norwell Norwell had a, a group of players as well. But let's, but, but let's see how the game goes on because both of these te teams are playing great basketball so far. I think it'll be a closer game by the fourth quarter. Well, we mentioned the rotation and both of these teams still earlier on in the season. Of course, this Nor is Norwell's second game. Trying to figure out their identities, Chris, and trying to figure out who their players are, are really going to turn into and have the best chemistry with. And we've seen a lot of that through the first quarter is eight players from each side found their way onto the court. And we're going to have a couple of more joining them to start this second quarter. As coming in for the boxers is Isadora Amazon. See Desiree Almeida inbounding it to Alex Williams. Rebecca Tannis back in. As is Angelina Fernandez. And for the Clippers, it's Christy Vieira with it. Gives over to Nina Elio. Ah, Alexandra Williams on another steal, wow. Draws the foul. She should have passed that back. She had Desiree Almeida wide open, parked in the paint. And let's see, take a look at the steal. Let's see right the trail there. on Desiree Almeida. Just wide open, yeah. if she throws that back, yeah, she, even to Isadora Amazon, that's a wide open layup. Yeah, it was something she should have did. <laughs> Let's see if she converts both. Oh. Elizabeth Williams comes in for see, Angelina Fernandez. Fernandez, I got hit hard on some contact down low in the paint there. She came to the bench a little bit shaken up. 16-9 the score, Brockton on top. Now thinking about the shot for a long while was Kirshner. Eventually it gets thrown up no good. Loose ball is going to be let roll out of bounds by Elizabeth Williams. Smart play there and the boxers will have the inbound opportunity. Elizabeth Williams bouncing it into her sister Alex. Yeah, the Brockton Lady Boxers are displaying more skills than the Norwell Clippers so far, so far, early on. As Alexandra Williams, Desiree Almeida. A nice three shot. is wow. good for Desiree Almeida. Wow, what a shot! That was, that was a great, that was a great playmaking find by Alexandra Williams, though. Boxers take their first double-digit lead of the game. 19 to 9 the score. Now loose ball still loose goes between Alex Williams' legs. 
And a jump ball called Brockton will take possession. Yeah, Alexandra Williams break, breaks the triple team and Desiree Almeida with the three. That's good. Caroline Kenny, meanwhile, on the other side of the court called for the push. A couple more substitutions. Nailani Montero, Kennard King back in for Morgan Thatcher's Brockton Boxers. Williams kicks it out top of the key for Elizabeth Williams. She goes overhead in for Rebecca Tannis, who couldn't handle it. And it's taken by Grace Oliver, who quickly gets it to Christy Vieira. Vieira's three. No good off the front of the rim. Elizabeth Williams, uncontested rebound, now fighting for it. Trying to find some space and turns it over to the Clippers. That was well fought by the Clippers. This shot well short off the front of the rim, out of play. The Brockton Lady Boxers are giving some space to the Norwell Clippers. Pretty, pretty, in pretty, pretty interesting decision by the Lady Boxers defense. But it's kind of working out a bit so far. Up, up by 10, 19 to 9. As Morgan Thatcher will address her team. Matthew Morani calling a timeout for the Norwell Clippers. A little bit of miscommunication. What was going on on the court? The Brockton Boxer didn't realize the timeout was called. Nor did the players for Norwell. So the official was standing at the half court line while all the action was 50 feet north of him. The coach asked for a timeout very quietly. We heard it because we were right next to the Norwell bench, but nobody else did. Whistle blew and nobody knew what was going on for a moment. So the clock stops, 6.06 to go in the second quarter. It is 19 to nine. Brockton Lady Boxers leading the Norwell Clippers in game four for the Lady Boxers on the season, looking to extend their season opening winning streak. Coming in at three and oh, beating Mansfield, which is always a tough team here at Staff Gymnasium on Wednesday night. Yeah, Mansfield is Mansfield's a very tough team. Mansfield is actually one of our rivals, so, so it's a good turnout, good turnout victory for them. And it's small wins like that, Chris, it's still early on in the season, so you, you don't ever want to talk too much about what those wins mean, but for a team that's been knocked out of the playoffs at Mansfield High School, probably five out of the last seven or eight years. Talking about the Lady Girls boxing The, the Brockton Lady Boxers always have to travel to Mansfield to play in the MIAA South Section postseason. Man, Mansfield had our number. Man. Man, Mansfield's always a tough wow. place to play. It's tough a very small yeah. gym, very loud. They get the crowd going. They get a DJ going. It's a very tough atmosphere to play in. And when you talk about a win like that early in the season, and you talk about compiling a string of wins together, if Brockton is somehow the higher seed in the MIAA uh, South section, you got to figure they have a pretty good shot of beating Mansfield here at home again. Yeah, that'll be pretty interesting. That'll be very, very interesting. And um, and uh, let's let's see if that could happen. Let's see if it could happen. Now Grace Oliver with it for the Clippers, trying to get above, <laughs> trying to get it to double digits, as they only have nine Ooh, points. Wow. They're going to do it right here. Counting in one, a hard foul. Yeah, Reb Tannis called for the push at the line. Is Christy Vieira? That is Tennis's third foul already. Wow, Rebecca Tennis already about three or four fouls so far early on in this game. She has to really cool, cool her, cool her playing a little bit. Brockton really needs her size. Evna Silva Ferrer comes in to replace her. Two of two, rather one of two at the charity stripe is Vieira. It's 19 to 12. All the way down. Couple subs come in. It's Elise Ryan and Molly Hogan back in. Ryan becomes the ninth Clipper on the court through this game. Three, good. Bang for Desiree Almeida. Desiree Almeida, what a sharp shooter she is! Wow, two for two from the three-point field. Here, starting and stopping, throws up a floater wide right. Good work by Canary King to keep it in bounds, but the Clippers take it, throw up a three, is off wow. the glass and in for Nina Elio. 
Clippers starting to claw their way back in. It's a seven point lead for the Boshers, 22 to 15. Elizabeth Williams trying to find some space. Gets it out to Desiree Almeida. Almeida right into the face of Canari King. Now Nelani Montero as the Brochers get the rotation. An offensive foul. He's going to be called on Evna Silva Ferreira. Yeah, that was Evna Silva Ferreira. She was a pretty, was pretty, pretty tough screen she set off the ball. That was incidental, but it was hard enough to draw the foul. So a lot of now confusion is that was the eighth foul against the boxers, which would normally be a one and one situation. But since the boxers had possession, it becomes a possession foul. Okay. They're gonna reset the game clock and the shot clock here. There was only 15 seconds left on the shot clock and there will be an additional five seconds added to the game clock. And there will be 20 seconds on the shot clock for the Clippers. This official is very diligent, Chris, in, in making sure that all the timing is correct, all the the call is making sure that that wasn't a one-on-one -on -one shooting situation. Yeah, these officials were very diligent and very smart. That should have been a travel call. However, the f baseline floater for Elise Ryan is good. 22-17, now Elizabeth Williams finding a little bit of space, goes down low to Silva, nice. and her layup is good. Great pass by Elizabeth Williams, great. A lot of complimentary basketball by the Lady Boxers. A lot of assists. They're just looking really good right now. Good Another steal, steal by Kanari King. Here she goes on a semi break. Her layup off the glass and in. Yeah, it's a nine point edge for the Boxers, 26 to 17. Yeah, Kanari King is probably the fastest player on the court, so, so expect more of that for her. Long two is good for number 12, Molly Hogan, the senior co-captain. That brings the Clippers back within seven, 26-19. Here's Elizabeth Williams for the Boxers. Gives it off to Kanari King. King turns on the Jets, finds a little hole, and she's gonna get called for a travel of all things as she lost possession. Yeah, Kanari King on the quick anticipation in the school and in the steal and takes it coast to coast. Meanwhile, Rachel Gold. The junior guard into the game, number 10 in blue, becomes the 10th clipper on the court in this first half. Great defense by Kinari King, forcing the turnover. Almeida misses her first three of the game. She's now two of three beyond the arc. Now the floater pass for Elio. Wholesale substitutions now for the boxers. Isadora, Amazon, Alex Williams, and Angelina Fernandez are all going to come into the game. King, Almeida, and Silva all take a break. A great substitution by Morgan Thatcher. Those were the those were the three effective players that were on the court that were for the Lady Boxers. Now they can now they can get a well deserved rest. As we just saw, Grace Oliver miss a one on one. Williams jumps up to grab that pass. Now two and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. Down to Amazon. Too high for Nelani Montero, able to retrieve it in the corner. Good awareness there by 
Nailani Montero and gets it back to Alex Williams. Williams trying to create some space, throws up a wild shot off the side of the backboard. Montero gets the rebound and is fouled in the process. So she will be at the line now for two shots. The foul called on Rachel Gold. Yeah, Nailani Montero, great anticipation off the follow back from Alexandra Williams. Now she does, now she gets her reward going to the line. No good on her first attempt. Oh, for two is Montero, usually a sharpshooter from the charity stripe. Now on the other end, the layup no good for Christy Vieira. The boxers come away with the rebound. Elizabeth Williams now 155 to go in the second quarter. 26 to 19, the score Brockton on top of the Norwell Clippers. Behind the efforts largely of Alex Williams and Elizabeth who throws up a three off the glass and in. Wow, what a shot by Elizabeth Williams. Her and Alexandra Williams just went back to back. Hard pass in is good. Overhand, one bounce off the glass and in for Grace Oliver. Alex Williams trying to create some separation, loses possession. Looking now for somewhere to go with it. She throws up a short wow. jumper and that He's 99 out of 100 shots is going to be made from there. Wide open for Alex Williams, who goes for another steal on Christy Vieira. It was a, it was a great fake and great, great use of her pivot foot. Now in and out off the back of the rim. Jump ball called. It will be a Brockton basketball. Under a minute to go, 55.4 seconds on the clock. A 10-point edge for the Boxers, 31-21. Now it's Williams with it. The boxers presumably will waste out the majority of the next 20 seconds before throwing up a shot. Elizabeth Williams setting up the offense. Trying to get her sister Alex to throw a pick. Nelani Montero bobbles it, but eventually comes down with it. Now Elizabeth Williams in the corner. Eight on the shot clock, Elizabeth Williams has to get rid of it, finds Fernandez. Her wow, shot, shot is good. Wow. Shot clock off, it's 33-21 in favor of the boxers. Great use of the shot clock and great possession. 15 seconds to go in the half. Here's Rachel Gold, her pass into the paint doesn't connect. Now Alex Williams takes a three. She had plenty of time to drive it and instead it goes wide right out of play. Norwell takes over with 3.7, so it'll be a catch, two dribbles, and a shot, presumably from around half court. And it's gonna be blocked by Elizabeth Williams. Buzzer sounds, we are at halftime. 33 to 21, the boxers, Chris, pouring it on in that second quarter, largely behind the efforts of Kenari King and Alexandra Williams. They have a 12 point lead going into the break. Yeah, Keenari King and Al Alexandra Williams playing great. Both of the leaders on the team, both of contributing well offensively and defensively as they just con collected their steals and turnovers for the for the Lady Boxers. Yeah, yeah, Norwell's keeping up with them. They're not they're not they're not too far behind. But let's see let's see what I, what we could get more from them. Yeah, Desiree Almeida came out good with the two threes, really going 100% early on. And this great, great overall contribution by the Lady Boxers. I just love what I'm seeing right now. A great 30, way to begin the game. 33 to 21 at the break. We're going to step aside, take a short break, and bring you second half action right after this. Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, basketball fans of all ages, welcome back into Arthur E. Staff Gymnasium at the Victor Ortiz Court for second half action between the Norwell Clippers and your Brockton Lady Boxers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Join alongside Chris Bazile. Chris, the boxers come in with a 12 point lead, 33 to 21, largely behind the effort of Alexander Williams, who has 11 points through the first half. Yeah, 11 points, a lot, uh, multiple assists and multiple steals. So she needs to keep on doing it for, a Brock, for the lady boxers to win. The boxers are going to take possession here as Norwell's pass went 
errantly out of play. And here is Alex Williams. Yeah, as you see, as you see, Anna Kirchner, she's making, she's making Alexandra Williams lose her. Oh, Tannis gets decked down low. They're oh. not going to call a foul on that. Mm, but karma happens instantly as Norwell throws that ball out of play. Yeah, Tannis didn't get her foul. Yeah, Alexandra Williams, she's gonna be she's gonna be pressured a lot a bit as she's as you see the defense right there. Three for Alex Williams, no good off the rim. And it is brought down by Nina Elio, the senior guard. Bounces it over to Vieira, her short jumper, no good, and the board goes to Rebecca Tennis. Fernandez missing the short jumper. No scoring as of yet in the second half. There's a block by Alex Williams who comes up with the loose ball, throws it up to Angelina Fernandez. That is textbook by Alex Williams. Elizabeth Williams spinning off the glass, no good. The rebound goes to Molly Hogan, the senior co-captain for the Clippers. Oh, wow. A lot of contact down low. Wow, Christy Vieira was a bit, was, was wrestled a bit. She'll go to the line. Nilani Montero called for that foul with this little break in the action. Let's talk a little bit more about Morgan Thatcher, the 2009-2010 Massachusetts Volleyball Player of the Year for the Brockton Boxers. That was a huge celebration back then. Volleyball or basketball? She she played both, but she got the award for volleyball. Okay, wow. Okay. She would have gotten one for basketball had she not been teamed up with her number one gunner, Taryn Johnson, who is one of the few thousand point scorers in Brockton Lady Boxer history, who is now an assistant coach at the University of Massachusetts Lowell. And they talk very, very often about different strategy, you know, uh, players, what to do as far as coaching. So they've moved from learning how to play together and, and they got all the way to the TD Garden uh, in their senior year. They go from trying to figure out how to play together and figure it out from on the court. Now they're strategizing together as coaches and kind of building that relationship that way. Yeah that's, pretty, yeah, that's pretty cool, building the relationship that way. Um, yeah, as, as, you, as, you, as you obviously said, they're, they're still great friends, and they can, all, they can still talk back to each other and um, still still strategize their strategies with each other as well. So that's pretty cool. So they're both, they were both outstanding Brockton High athletes, the, the, the poster childs of the school. So it's pretty, so it's pretty amazing to have, have that connection, have that athletic build with each other. So it's good commonalities between the two. And with Lowell being a lot closer than Fairfield, Connecticut, where Taryn Johnson was a coach before uh, she jumped to Massasoit for a couple of years and then eventually to UMass Lowell. Some world-class facilities up there at the Saugus Center and definitely was mentioned to have the boxers come up for a couple of games, see what it's like at the college level, see what the kind of work ethic, the facilities what they do as far as college basketball. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. And Morgan Thatcher, Morgan Thatcher um, off to a great start for the um, Lady Boxes so far, 3-0 for the, for the campaign. Yeah, so she's looking good. Kind of, it's kind of good she got some, some help from her friend that she, that, that she went to the school with. Of course, Morgan last season, a assistant coach for Stonehill College right across the border in Easton. And she got the call about this job replacing Chris Connolly as coach of the Brockton Lady Boxers. She jumped at the opportunity to come home and, and try to help the boxers get back to where they were in 2009, 2010 when they made it all the way to the state tournament 
before ultimately falling in the state semifinal at the TD Garden and really bringing this boxer program back to what it was in those days and on the same court that she played on many years ago. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that's really good. And pretty much, just tell me about tell me about her playing style, Morgan Thatcher. What, what was her position, by the way? She was perhaps one of the last pure centers that we've seen. She was the one in the circle taking the opening tip off. She was parked in the paint. She's uh, a beast in the words of our director and producer tonight, Mike the Postman Simmons. And do you know why we call him the Postman, Chris? Why? Because he always delivers. <laughs> and twice That's on good. Sunday. That's good. Yeah, I could tell by her. She looks about six feet. Is that is that correct? She's she's, a, she's up there. She's this she's the five eleven, six foot, six one, somewhere mm -hmm. in that area. What about her ball handling skills? Amazing. She I didn't do too much dribbling, but she had she might still have the single season rebound record because she was always under the basket. And as soon as she got it, she kicked it out to one of the shooters, either Taryn Johnson, uh, Desiree um, Ziana Fortunato was on that team. She was one of the big scorers as well. It was a lot of chemistry and a lot of different talents, and they figured out how to blend together. And that's what Morgan's trying to bring back, really learning good. the different mix of the players. That's why Elizabeth Williams is kind of half center, half point guard. Alex Williams, the, the sophomore, getting a lot of starting at, at point guard, a lot of minutes. And it's all about trying to find that chemistry, and that's what both of these teams here tonight are trying to do is find that chemistry, figure out what kind of team you're building, and figure out how to get the players to kind of mesh together on the court. Yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, Morgan Thatcher, obviously a really, a really intelligent individual. Yeah, so, so, I, so I, applaud, I applaud her accomplishments. One of the cheerleaders did such a good job flipping at half court that she flipped right out of her shoe. Wow, pretty. Oh, that was well done. <laughs> Straight out of the shoe. Mm. We got a timeout on the court called by Norwell. It is 35 to 25. Four and a half to go in the third quarter. Both of these teams looking to keep the goose egg in the loss column. This is Norwell's second game of the season. Lengthy break for the boxers there. Not back here until early January. Alex Williams now gets it over to her sister, Elizabeth Williams. The handoff to Alex. Back door, back door, be ready to help. Alex backs up beyond the arc, gives it back to Elizabeth. Elizabeth, a long three. It's wow. good, nothing but net. She was three feet beyond the arc. What a shot. Just what a shot by Elizabeth Williams. Think of three is Anna Kirshner. Now taking it is number four. That's Nina Elio, and that is good to bring the Clippers back within 10. Nina Elio answered right back. Williams goes oh. kind of a hook shot pass is what it turned into, and it is Desiree Almeida. That was, no, excuse me, that was Isadora Amazon. And, and, wow, another three. Wow, both of these teams are trading baskets. It's looking great offensive basketball. Elizabeth Williams for a three is miss. The chess match continues as Evna Silva Ferrer is going to come in. Molly Hogan, Grace Oliver coming out for the Clippers. They are replaced by Caroline Degnan. Five, Christy Vieira back in. Nine point lead for the boxers. That's a very bad angle shot that somehow went off the front of the rim and in. 40 to 33 as Desiree Almeida gets ready to come back in for the boxers. Elizabeth Williams in for, oh wow, Ferreira. 
First shot, no good. The Clippers take it. Here is Christy Vieira, the captain. And a hold oh, called on Alex Williams, who oh, wants to know exactly what she did there. Yes, yeah. yeah, she she thought Christy Vera kind of grappled a bit on that on that behind the back dribble, but she didn't get her way. A block now called on Elizabeth Williams, who Alexander Williams, Alex Williams, who wants to go. Back in. She's going to come out uh, for Kanari King now with a couple of fouls against her yeah, early she, in this third quarter. Yeah, she'll get a well timed break as she handed, as she dapped up Morgan Thatcher a bit. Starting to get frustrated on the court is Alexandra Williams. Now it is Degnan, the senior forward. Quickly off to Veer. Her jumper is good from the charity stripe. Now down to a five point lead for the boxers, 40 to 35 with 2.15 to go in the third. Kenari King over to Elizabeth Williams, now Nailani Montero. Montero's bad angle hook is no good, brought down uncontested by Kirshner. Kirshner to Elise Ryan, and she is fouled. Yeah, yeah, Norwell Clippers kind of stormed back with great defense, great trapping. And um, consistent, consistent shots. So and, and taking out Alexandra Williams out the out the ball game. So they're looking good. It's a five. It's a five point game. Big story has been about the rotation and the steady stream of players coming from each of these benches, there's been nine boxers seeing action here tonight and 10 Clippers. Oh, that's a, that's a pretty interesting foul against Ke Kenari King. I don't know about that. I thought, I thought Christy Vera was a bit tough on the offensive end, but, but, but they'll reward her instead. Now a one and one bonus situation for the remainder of this game for the Clippers and down five, that could be huge. Any and all of the free throws. That one goes way up, way up above the shot clock yeah, and eventually finds its way to the bottom of the net. It is now 36-40, Boxers. No. No, one 30, possession game, that. 37-40. Yeah, that rainbow shot is two for two on that chip, trip to the charity stripe for the era. Kanari King, wow. fast break is good. Yeah, Keen, yeah, Keen, that's what I love about her game, man. She's just very quick, very quick with the ball in her hand, a great dribbler as well. Try to come up with the steal on Ellie Phillips, and she's gonna draw the foul. A hold called on Kanari King. Yeah, she's probably a bit too aggressive on the offensive end as well. She loves the, she loves the hand check. Alexandra Williams getting ready to come back in for the boxers. Good on her first attempt he is Phillips. Kenari King will get the break. And now trying to bring it back to a one possession game is the sophomore guard, Ellie Phillips. And she does just that, 42 to 39. It's a three point ball game, the boxers led by as many as 12. Williams losing her balance off the side of the backboard. The rebound is loose and it'll be a jump ball. Brockton will retain. Angelina Fernandez throwing it about 18 feet in for Alex Williams. Now Elizabeth. Liz Williams trying to find some space. Her turnaround jumper, no good. Angelina wow. Fernandez counted in one. Angelina Fernandez, what a game she's having. The push called on Caroline Degnan. Now it is Fernandez looking to bring it to a six-point lead. 
And she is just a bit outside. Yeah, just a bit outside. But she'll be happy with the eight points she got. Pump fake now. Vieira takes a long three. That's off the front of the rim. And the glass no good. Offensive board for the Clippers. Fast Ooh, movement wow. and it ought to move, but it rolls off of the rim no good. And the eventual turnaround jumper by Elise Ryan is good. Man, the, Brock the Brockton Lady Boxers defense has really just faltered the last six or so minutes. Only 11 points through this third quarter for the Boxers. Elizabeth Williams looking to add to that total, gets her own rebound. That's fundamental basketball off Great. the glass and in. Great. Three seconds on the clock. Couple dribbles. The half court shot is off the glass and no good. The buzzer sounds. We are at the end of the third quarter. It is 46 to 41. What a turnaround. The Boxers leading by 12 coming into the third quarter. They go into the fourth with only a five point lead. Yeah, man, and as I said, the the Lady Boxers defense really just just faltered a bit. So whoever whoever wins the whoever wins this game, it's gonna come, it's gonna come down to defense because because Nor Norwell's playing great on the offensive end. They're con they're con converting the baskets. They're converting from the line. They I read really, this whoever whoever just reduces the mo whoever just plays well defensively will win this game because these are two great offensive clubs. But I think defense will kind of take over it. And whoever wants it more will take it. Name of the game for the boxers. Stay out of foul trouble. The Clippers already have a one and one shooting situation for any foul committed through the remainder of this game. If the boxers get one more foul against them, that turns into a double bonus and any foul thereafter will be two free throws for the Clippers. Going to be the big gunners for the boxers. Angelina Fernandez, Alex, and Elizabeth Williams. Neilani Montero and Desiree Almeida. Down low off the glass and in for Grace Oliver. Yeah, 46, 43 boxers and here's Alexandra Williams. The congested layup is no good, and we got a foul. It's going to go against Neilani Montero. That is the last foul the boxers had to give in the one-on-one -one shooting situation. Yeah, so we'll see. So we'll see Norwell to the line quite often after this point. Oh, we got a we got a gimpy we got a gimpy Clipper. That's Christy Vieira, the captain. Oh, she's actually tearing up a bit. Seems to be her left leg that's the issue, oh. limping a bit, and she's in visible amounts of pain on the Clippers' sideline. As you mentioned, starting to tear up and in a lot of pain there. Oh. Number five in white, the leading, or the second leading scorer for the Clippers this season. 17 points in the first matchup for the Clippers, and a good game here tonight as well. Now coming up with the turnovers, Grace Oliver, her layup is good. A couple of quick points, and we are tied, 46 to 46. Help, help. Go back, 22 up top, to 22. Alex Williams looking for an explanation from Desiree Almeida as to why she was not given the ball there, the ball bounced out of play off of Norwell, now Kanari King is going to come back in, she will replace Desiree Almeida. 7-11 left in the fourth quarter, Alex Williams off the inbound pass. Looking to give the boxers back the lead, we haven't had to say that in quite a long time. Yeah, I was in. Now the Clippers looking to take their first lead in quite some time. Off the front of the rim, three offensive rebounds for the Clippers there before Kanari King comes up with the loose ball. Yeah, rebounding has been a great. And Try to force it down low to Tannis. She gets it back top of the key for Elizabeth Williams. She hard hands it into her sister Alex off the front of the rim. No good, and the rebound uncontested for Grace Oliver. Oliver slowing up now. 
trying to give the Clippers some room and a foul is gonna be called on Montero. Double bonus situation and Montero is in quite a bit of foul trouble now. Wow. That's 10 fouls for the Lady Boxers to th only three for the Norwell Clippers. Almeida's gonna come right back in. As Vieira is now going to go seek attention from Jerry Connor. Free throw shot, no good. We are still tied. Montero comes out. And a Kirshner at the line, missing her first attempt. Second one's going to come up well short. It's a couple of different players now for the Clippers that we've seen, Chris, with that high rainbow shot that almost clears the top of the shot clock as far as the height level and a couple of them haven't quite gotten to the rim. Yeah, some of these guys have some interesting free throw styles as, as you just said, Matt. Lack of scoring the last couple of minutes, still tied at 46 all. A jump ball is going to be called and Brockton will retain possession. Back in Molly Hogan. She will replace Caroline Kenny who was the 11th member of the Clippers on the court in this game. Let's see if Coach Morani beats his expected total. That might have been tipped by Oliver. Christy all the way down. Christy Vieira is going to come back in and Still favoring that left leg, Chris. So that's something to keep an eye on whether the boxers try to exploit that. Rebecca Tannis and Anna Kirshner come out for their respective squads. We are still knotted up at 46 apiece. Now a long three to give the Clippers the wow, lead is solid. good by Nina Elio. Great shot by Nina Elio deep, from deep range. She's about five feet beyond the arc there to give the Clippers their first lead of the second half. Been all boxers since the early stages of this game until about halfway through the third quarter. Now jump ball and a little bit of arm fighting and the Clippers are gonna take over. And Nina, Nina Elliott from the pass from Christy Vera and a, a deep three. It was contested by Desiree Almeida but not contested well enough. As she Nothing still but it. net. This one tipped and handled by Hogan now giving off to Mary Grace Seitch. Here goes down, jump ball called before Coach Morani could get the timeout in. Yeah, Norwell has, has actually contained the game of Alexandra Williams pretty well. Um, she hasn't scored a basket in quite a while, so they're doing a good job of her. Here now doing some intense testing. Here's another three. This one no good for Elio. Neilani Montero getting triple teamed and a jump ball. Brockton will retain. Coach Thatcher was uh, a little bit visibly upset on the boxer sideline saying, why is that a jump ball anytime we do it? But anytime they do it, it's a foul. And there is a very big difference in fouls yeah. Here in the second half, 10 for the boxers, uh, against the boxers, I should say, and only three against the Clippers. Yeah, and this is a pretty physical ball game, so that's a pretty surprising margin. Now Vieira, down low, bounce pass. The short shot is good for Molly Hogan, and a timeout called by Brockton with... The boxers trailing by 551 to 46 with 448 to go in the fourth quarter. Yeah, Nor yeah, Norwell just playing Norwell just playing all around basketball. They're controlling the time of the possession lately. They're they're playing well according to the game, they're playing outstanding defense because they're not fouling the lady boxers really well. Yeah, the lady boxers are just really struggling. They haven't they haven't even I, I I'm not sure have, have you seen them attempt a shot in the last couple or so minutes? Or not a not a, a free, clean uh, I, shot. Yeah. Not a clean shot. 
Yeah, just yeah, just yeah, great, a great, a great effort by the late by the Norwell Clippers so far. Well, let's talk about the performances, Chris, of the benches, especially Nina Elio for the Clippers and uh, Christy Vera. She started, but she's having a heck of a game as well. And for the boxers, Desiree Almeida and Kanari King off the bench. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The benches are both are both looking really strong for both of these teams. And which, whichever team, whichever team's benches looks better, we'll see. We'll see how it turns out. And still favoring her left leg is Christy Vera. Let's see if she's able to shake that off at any point. 4:48 to go. The boxers have to turn something around quick, or the Clippers are going to keep pounding away. Alex Williams throwing this one off of one of the Clippers. They take over oh. and now push down. Melani Montero is going to be called. Another foul for the Lady Boxers. Another one. Another trip to the line for Norwell. This is Molly Hogan. That is the fourth foul against Nailani Montero. She's going to come out in favor of Isadora Amazon. Missing her first attempt. And good on her second is Molly Hogan. 52 to 46, it is a six point ball game. Now down low and unable to grab it is Desiree Almeida. Yeah, there's just, there's just been some bad offensive possessions by the Lady Boxers. Great defense by the Clippers. Wide open pass to Elio. She gets it over to Grace Oliver. Oliver hands off to Vieira, who lost clean possession, throws up a rainbow shot that turned into a pass. Unable to handle it. Down low was Oliver. It finds its way out of bounds. The Boxers take over with 4.17 to go. You seen the triple team on Alexandra Williams, but she breaks, but she breaks it. Oh. That's just pure talent, breaking through a triple team like that. Yeah, she, yeah, uh, she, she needed more help on the other side of the court. Not, not much openness, not much open players, as we see a, a call on the court. The year is going to be called for a foul here. She came out of that pig pile with the ball. Yeah, yeah Nor Norwell, Norwell certainly had their their fouls given. As we see a six point game here. Alex Williams with it. Trying to get the boxers on the board. They haven't scored in at least the last two and a half minutes. Going all the way in, she's fouled on her way in and will be at the charity stripe for two shots the foul is a hold called on Molly Hogan. <laughs> Lise Ryan, the leading scorer to this point in the season, coming back in for the Clippers. She replaces Hogan. Meanwhile, Williams, good on her first attempt, the first point for the boxers in what seems like a very, very long time, and she goes two of two. It's a four-point ball game, 52 to 48 now, halfway through the fourth quarter, wide open. Can she catch up to it in play? No. It finds its way out of bounds. The boxers will take over. And for Isadora, Amazon gives it back to Elizabeth Williams, who has not been involved the last handful of minutes. Gives it off to Alex Williams. A couple of boxers getting ready to come back in. Kanari King is among them. And a double dribble is going to be called here on Desiree Almeida. Nailani Montero, Kanari King back in. They will replace... Almeida and Amazon. Back 
Wow. Good steal by Alex Williams. Wide open layup is good. That was a pickpocket steal. One possession game, 52 oh. to 50, and a timeout called by the Norwell Clippers. 3.15 to go, and Alex Williams, let's take a look at that textbook pickpocket. Whoop! Goes around the body, wide open layup off the glass and in. Clean defense, expert defense. Yeah, Alexandra Williams certainly got this lady boxer team on her back, her, her and her sister, Elizabeth Williams. I feel, I feel as though Elizabeth Williams, she's doing a good game. She's doing a good job controlling the game, running the point as well. And the Williams sisters trying to get more involved. They've kind of been absent in the, in the second half and Alex with that steal and quick layup is doing just that. Elizabeth Williams has been involved in the last minute and a half as well. Yeah, yeah, we got we got three minutes and fifteen seconds to go in this game, so it's gonna be an interesting, an interesting ride for these final three minutes, huh, Matt? It should be very interesting. The boxers at one point down by six, after leading by twelve to enter the second half, and now down by just two points. Anna Kirshner to inbound for the Clippers. She finds a wide open Vieira. Vieira who's on a gimpy leg. As the boxers now go full, full court press, the three pointer no good, trying to be forced up by Grace Oliver. Wow. And she's eventually fouled by Melani Ooh. Montero. I don't know about that call. You're gonna call that at the end of this game and it didn't seem as physical as enough to me. There's more than a few people sitting on the sideline with us that are questioning that call. Uh, that was a tic tac -y call. I, I kind of wouldn't call it in that situation. Melani Montero has fouled out of this game. She is replaced in the lineup by Desiree Almeida. Now, but Norwell's been doing a great job of breaking the full court presses of Brockton, uh, except for that steal by Alex Williams. As, as Grace Oliver misses her first from the line. Alex Williams getting some coaching from the not so newly named athletic director Kevin Caro saying slow it up, take your time. You got plenty of time, you're only down two. Good coaching from the sideline there by the wow. former principal oh. of South Middle School. And Kanari King comes up with the loose ball here. Now two and a half to go. One on the shot clock. And not realizing how much time was on the shot clock is Elizabeth Williams. And it's a 30-second violation against the boxers. Yeah, Angelina Fernandez blew a layup from a beautiful disc from Alexandra Williams. Those are opportunities you've got to convert. Canari comes up with the steal, but it finds its way out of bounds. And Norwell has 26 seconds on the shot clock after the inbound. I did not like that. Ooh. Ooh. Ah, that was a that was a disgusting tangle from Alexandra Williams and Christy Vieira. Let's see a replay on that if you could. Elizabeth Williams in the corner. She's wide open. The Clippers clearly don't think she's gonna try to shoot the three ball now with 205 to go. Liz Williams gives it to Alex. She does shoot the three, and ah. it's nothing but net. The boxers have a one-point lead with 1.56 to go. Great, great shot by Alex Williams. Driving baseline, wow. and a nice block wow. by Angelina Fernandez. That was just a textbook block, wow. 
Yeah. She blocks the ball with her left arm. That's the blocking, that's the blocking, that's the blocking hand. Good job by Angelina Williams. And good job by the referees to see that that ball clearly went out off of the Norwell Clippers. Elizabeth Williams left wide open as the Clippers double team the ball, now fighting from behind once again. Oh, a what a rebound. three by Almeida, following her shot gets the rebound. Now the Clippers able to clear it up. It's Anna Kirshner. Kirshner driving and looking for the traveler. The boxers are not gonna get it. This one out of play off of Alex Williams. Let's take a look at that oh. sequence and the three ball that started it all for Alex Williams. Morgan Thatcher is going to take a timeout. 1.23 to go. The Boxers have regained the lead, 53 to 52. And Chris, we better buckle up for the final 83 seconds in this one because it has been a wild fourth quarter. It's, a, it's been a good one from two of the best teams in D1. As you see this block here by Angelini Fernandez again. Yeah, not in my house. And then, yep, right off the knee. Yeah, is Norwell representing the, what, what, what um, side is Norwell representing, by the way? The side? Are they in the south sectional? They're at uh, south section. section. South section, D1, yeah. I believe they are in, I want to say the Hockamock League, but I think it, it might be the Hockamock division. Okay, all right, cool. Vieira still trying to stretch out that left leg. Yeah, two of the, yeah, two of the best teams so far early on in the season. It's been it's been a great it's been a great game. Vieira wow. down low loses it. Alex Ooh. Williams picks it up. That's clean, Ooh. and now she is. Christy Vieira got angry. They're gonna call it a hold. They could have called it a a trip. Interference. The boxers could go on a two-minute power play for that one. Wow. Hey, big box out right now, boo. Big box out. Hold is the official call. Yeah, we got we got a hockey reference could've, from my guy Matt Nelson. Could have been a kick. Could have been could have been anything as Vieira was under Alex Williams, and yeah. now in a one and one bonus situation are the Brockton boxers. Williams hits the first to open up right a two-point lead, and looking to make it a three-point lead is Alex Williams. And does wow. just that. 119 to go. The boxers have regained the lead and lead it by three. 55-52. A timeout. And a loud, a loud timeout by the Norwell Clippers. Yeah, a loud, loud timeout, loud up, Miss Fear. And they were about to have a five-second violation called against them for not inbounding quick enough. Yeah, yeah. A, a good a good timeout by Coach Mariani of of Norwell. Man, 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 what about the, what, man, Alexandra Williams, what about her, her play? Uh, oh, but, uh, unbe unbelievable play. Unbelievable game by her. Well, you see it in the swings, right, Chris? In the third quarter, the Williams sisters weren't involved as much as they were in the first half, and you saw the way that that swung. In the fourth quarter, with about five and a half minutes to go, the Williams sisters started to get more involved, and you see what's happened. The boxers claw their way back from six down after leading by 12 and eventually take a three-point lead with 1.19 to go. Yeah the, yeah, the, yeah, the Williams sisters definitely kept this game alive for the Lady Boxers. They, they've been, they, did, they did the all-around work as, as, some, as a few others did contributed to their parts as well, such as Kinari King and Angelina Fernandez. Yeah, yeah buckle up for a ride. One, one nineteen remaining. Both teams now in a bonus situation, the Boxers have a one and one for the next couple of fouls that the Clippers commit. Hard inbound pass, complete to Grace Oliver. Now it's Elio. Elio bouncing it back to Oliver. She takes three steps with the ball. That travel's not called. Gives it over to Anna Kirshner. She's backing up. Now gives it back to Oliver. Oliver over to Molly Hogan, the senior co-captain, down low. The layup, no good offensive rebound for Hogan, and that's no good. Another offensive board, this time to Nina Elio. 
And now another block for Fernandez, but the boxers turn it over. Elizabeth Williams guilty that time. Floater by Vieira, no good. And another offensive board and a timeout called again by Coach Matthew Morani. Yeah, the re yeah the rebounding numbers have been rebounding numbers are certainly outnumbered by the Norwell Clippers, which is quite the face on Coach Morgan Thatcher, who is questioning if the Clippers <laughs> had possession of that ball when the timeout was called and awarded. Yeah, I like Morgan. The ref said yes that they did have clear possession. It was in the hands of Grace Oliver, and Coach Thatcher is, we'll say, more than a little skeptical of that call. Yeah, Morgan Thatcher is a good personality. She's an, she's an interesting coach. I like her. 40.0 seconds to go in this one. There is exactly 10 seconds separating the shot clock and the game clock. The boxers still holding on to a three-point lead. It's 55 to 52 in what has been a wild back and forth affair. The boxers at halftime had a 33 to 21 lead. A 12-point lead at the end of the third quarter. They were down six. Get it. Yeah, 40 seconds left in this game, and it's a three-point game, so it's going to be a pretty scary, pretty scary affair for both of these teams. You just got to just gotta buckle up. Grace Oliver to inbound. She gets it into Molly Hogan. Hogan working against Kanari King, now oh, wow. broken up by Angelina Fernandez. And we're going to warn the athletic director that if any of the equipment on this table gets broken, somebody is responsible for that. Oh, no, it's not me, Kevin, no, no. <laughs> Grace Oliver gets it into Vieira. Now Elizabeth Williams scrapping for it, and a foul is going to be called on Williams that... Man, this has just been a scrappy game. All of these girls are just giving a, an effort of a, a war. A scrappy game by all of these girls. Now, personally, I would have called that a jump ball. Elizabeth Williams did not have a hand on that ball, but it was very much under. Yeah, another questionable Nina call. Elio. Another questionable call against the boxers. Missing the first free throw attempt, that could be huge. Oh, for two, Elizabeth Williams gets the karma rebound. And now a quick foul by Vieira. Is going to be called for the push. Now one of the best shooters on the floor, Alex Williams, is at the charity stripe for a one and one looking to make this a two-possession ball game. And... Hope to seal the game at that point if she is successful. No good on her first attempt, not earning the second. Vieira comes down with the rebound. 20 seconds to go, shot clock off. Let's see if Norwell goes for the tire oh, a quick two. Canari wow. King comes up with the loose ball and sends it too far ahead for Alex Williams. Clock stops with 10.8 to go. Norwell's got the, the ball. Both coaches trying to take a timeout. Let's see who it's going to be called on. That will play a big factor. So it is going to be called by the Brockton Boxers. So both teams with one remaining. That would have been Norwell's last timeout, which would have been a huge call if they decided that that timeout was against Norwell. Whew, let's catch our breaths for a minute. There is 10.8 seconds left. It's a three-point lead for the Brockton Boxers. Norwell's got the ball. Yeah, let's try to let's try to focus on what's happening because it's been a great game. So if, if you're the coach of Norwell, are you going for the quick two and then hope to get it back and, and go for another two? Or are you going for overtime and shooting the three? I'll go for the quick two. The boxer's defense has been a bit exposable today. I'll go for the quick two and try, and, try to, and try to rely on my defense for the next possession. This has been quite a wild back and forth affair. But while we have this little break, let's mention again, there's been 11 Clippers 
on the court. 11 different Clippers, I should say, on the court tonight. And nine Brockton boxers on the court. So the rotation's heavy as these two teams try to figure out their identity for the season. 10 seconds to go. And a quick timeout. That is Norwell's last remaining timeout. As they will now inbound it from north of half court. Be the inbound right in front of us with 6.5 seconds to go. So not quite a catch and shoot, Chris, but a catch, find a little bit of open space and throw up the shot. You've got a little bit more time that you don't have to rush it, but you still have to rush it with only six seconds to go. Yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah, they still, have, yeah, pre, yeah, you pretty much nailed it. That's kind of that's kind of how their offense sort of has to play for this final six and a half seconds. And let's see, and let's see what happens. Let's see what they'll do with it, and let's see how the boxes defend it. So it's, it's going to be pretty interesting. If I'm the boxers, I'm willingly giving up a two right here. Send in all of your big guns, the two Williams sisters. Rebecca Tannis, and I'd say Kanari King, and hope to disrupt the three ball. Kanari King on the floor, Angelina Fernandez, the Williamses, and Desiree Almeida. Inbounding is Grace Oliver. Six and a half seconds to go. Gets it down low. Oh, the three luck. ball for Vieira oh. is no good. Two seconds left. And stepping out of play is Nina Elio with 0 0.8 seconds to go. Norwell not giving in. In for Alex Williams. Wow. The buzzer sounds and this one was wild. 55 to 52 is the final. Mike, can you hear me? Yeah, we got unplugged. Do we want to do a wrap? Do a wrap. All right. All right, so Chris, 55 to 52, the final score. It was a wild one in the end. The boxers are able to hold off. At the very end, it got scary. Christy Vieira in the corner had a wide open three. She had a lot of space, a lot of time. She threw it up. It was no good. And on the other side, the Clippers unable to chase it down. Yeah, it was a clean look too. I mean, it was just a great offensive. It was just great offensive strategy after that time by by Coach Mariani, and the Clippers almost had it, almost had it, but it slipped. It just slipped. It was a great shot, but but they weren't. But they got the offensive rebound. She stepped out of bounds, and then it was it was a great heroic effort by the Lady Boxers. Honestly, they they really they really played their wills out. They they did they did foul a lot, but it kind of turned out for the better and. And Coach Thatcher should be happy about it. She's 4-0. Oh. Well, this was one of those gut check type of games where the boxers had a large lead going into the half. Then they suddenly found themselves down by six and had to claw their way back in. And they were able to do so, eventually taking a three-point lead that would stand for the rest of the game. 55-52, to 52, your final score for everyone here at Brockton Community Access. Our cameraman, Isaac DeRosa, Emma Reardon, down in the truck, Mike the Postman Simmons with yet another delivery to the viewers of Brockton. My broadcast partner, Chris Bazile. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and we will see you next game.